blazes outside and it was starting to get cold. Um, so I wanted to move inside. And uh, basically, uh, what I did is this is just a plastic barrel. So you can find these on Craigslist usually. People use them for rain barrels and things like that. Um, and then this is a six inch uh, like duct fan. So it's like an HVAC thing or people use them sometimes in greenhouses. Um, I'll send an email or make a file for the list. Uh, there's kind of a simple like rule of thumb calculation for how large of an event you need uh, based on the open area at the front of the booth to keep things moving through. Um, but I just really simply, you know, cut the front out of this barrel um, and then traced the open end of the duct fan on the top and cut a hole out. Um, and then just with six inch like heating duct, uh, I just made a short run and a piece of plywood with a hole in it that I just kind of prop up in my window. So it just pulls the glaze out and it does actually a much better job than I expected it would. Um, and kind of keeps everything moving through um, and out my back window. What happens outside the window? It uh, goes into the woods. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, pretty much all of the stuff in my glazes. There's no. I don't use any like um, heavy metals, chrome, cobalt, any of that stuff. So it's all pretty benign um, stuff to just go up behind our garage into the woods. Um, and I use. Uh, I also brought t the two different kinds of guns I use. So I've mostly been using this. Um, this is really handy. Uh, it's a little more expensive than the Super Cheapo. These are like $10 at the Harbor Freight. You can find them on sale. Um, but this uh, clogs much less. Uh, it has a much larger tube that the glaze comes through. Um, and it's far, far easier to clean. So I think these are $30 or $40. You can get them either on Amazon or from the ceramic shop. Um, and these are really handy because you can just use mason jars. So you can have all your glazes kind of lined up. Um, spray what you need. You just take the mason jar out and you can dip the siphon tube in water, spray it real quick and it cleans the gun out and then put your next glaze on. Uh, so very simple, much easier to clean. Um, yeah, these work okay. They have more adjustments. They're better guns for paint, but probably not for glaze in my experience. Um, and then, yeah, I just used a little center block in here, uh, and I put my banding wheel on that, and spin the pots and spray them. And I have a few examples here of things. What kind of compressor do you use? Yeah, Yeah. so I use uh, just this little pancake compressor. Um, like, what is that? Huge! <laughs> yeah, and you probably couldn't spray it, you know, like, continuously, but for spraying the tops of pots and things, this is plenty big enough. These... We bought this, I don't know, five or six years ago. I think it was $100, and it came with a brad nailer or something. Yeah, yeah. So not too terribly expensive. The, um, the barrel, I think, was $20 on Craigslist, and the duct fan, I think, was $60 on Amazon. Yeah, how do you keep that thing clean inside? Um, yeah, it's not been a problem so far. I think I will try to add a filter to it um, to kind of keep it... Uh, from clogging up. It's been working fine so far. Um, what I was thinking about trying was a like a, <coughs> a wet shop vac filter, kind of the foam one, and then saturate that and see if I can get it to, with water, and see if I can get it to hang off the vent to keep mm -hmm. so much, so many solids from coming through. What do you need that for, sir? The, the, the vent? vent yeah. So, um, so I can spray inside, and then the vent will pull, it basically pulls the glaze into the booth and out my window. Mm -hmm. So it's not making a big mess uh, particles. You're not anywhere. breathing a lot of fumes? Right, yeah. Well, that's, that's the whole idea, right? That's the whole idea. And also it doesn't make such a mess. I mean, it really mm -hmm. kind of goes everywhere if you don't have something mm -hmm. pulling it away from you. And I do st still wear a mask. Um, the kind of regular P100 mm -hmm. 3M respirator mask. Very nice. Yeah, so I don't know if anybody has You're any questions. You're going to show us questions. some work. Oh yeah, so um, just some, these are a few examples of sprayed glazes. So what I normally would do is dip the pots first, uh, so I make sure I get coverage over everything. One trick I've found 
is to uh, glaze the insides first, and then I'll wax the bottoms and dip them bottom side down first. And that'll leave, you know, bare spots on the top, um, so you can spray your glazes on the top, know for sure that you have coverage around the bottom. And that's good, especially if you're using glazes that move a lot, like I like to use wood ash glazes a lot. So they're concentrated near the top, and you're getting the unlayered glaze, but without the risk of uh, having bare spots. Yes. And why did you say that that the pump wasn't strong enough? The pump? Your, your, I mean your oh, compressor. the compressor? compressor. Um, it's just not a very high volume compressor, so... You know, if you were like spraying glazes for eight hours or something, mm -hmm. it would be constantly on and off and on and off. But for doing ten pots or something, it's plenty fine. It's a very small air compressor. Um, oh, yeah. how big are they? Normal? They can be huge. Oh, well. like, yeah. <laughs> we have them in the bike shop, so we, and I mean, it's big. Oh. Could you give us the details on like the company um, of the sprayers? Yeah, so this is um, Just for the record the critter spray gun. It's called. Um, it says K grip on the handle. I think this is. I think Bailey also sells mm -hmm. the same gun yeah. under yeah. their name. Mm -hmm. uh, Bailey. Yep. Yeah. Um, and this is the cheapest Harbor Freight spray gun. Mm -hmm. So you can get much nicer spray guns than this. They look the same. Um, but for glazes, you're not needing like the really super fine, like, I don't know how to, how to describe. I mean, if you're painting something with like automotive paint, it needs to be super precise, but that's just not necessary for the glazes. And it, the glazes are really hard on the spray guns anyways. Yeah. Tell me again on this on this model. How do you how do you clean it out with water? Uh, so you have um, to run it while it's on the compressor. Run yeah. So with it? with this on the compressor, you know you're spraying like this. It just works on a siphon. Um, so what I would do is I would just take my jar of glaze off. And I'd have like a bucket of clean water, and with this on the compressor, I would just dip the siphon in the water and spray until it, and it clear. clears the tube. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's very very fast. Whereas this, in order to really get this clean, you have to like take the whole thing apart in order to wash it out. It makes it thoroughly. worth the extra 30 or 40 dollars. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And, and if you're changing glazes, you don't have to clean out the container. You just keep you store your glazes in the mason jars and screw them on. Mm -hmm. Then you just hose down the blue thing? That's got yep. to be full of glaze. It actually does get quite as full as you might think. It does stick to the back a little bit. Um, I hosed it out yesterday to bring it here for the first time since I built it. So, yeah, it's really not too bad. It does draw most of it out. Do you have any idea what how you could handle it if you wanted to? Um, if you were using heavy metals in your glazes yeah. and you wanted to spray outside, but you didn't really want to destroy your property. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Um, the thing, what I think you could probably do is build like an, uh, an airlock, like a water airlock. So uh, if you've ever seen like the fermentation jars, how they have like the lid which sits in the gallery that's full of water. <coughs> so you have this, uh, the thing I'm thinking of is like uh, Spray if, you're making, if you're making beer or wine, you use a thing called an airlock so the gases can escape but the water catches any kind of um, particulates or mm -hmm. anything. So I think if you ran the duct into, I mean, either into a bucket of water um, or into a, yeah, I guess it would just be into a bucket of water. The problem is that they well, as soon as they have a filter where you plug yeah. it in. The one where I work, they, they have, it's like a paper filter. Like it's okay. like this layered paper. It, and it catches most of the, <coughs> most of the solid oh, stuff, yeah. huh. you know. Um, and then if you're, well, yeah. So it's kind of like a furnace filter? It's sort of kind of, yeah. I think those are maybe like nylon material, I think. Yeah, those waffly things in the cardboard yeah. frames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah, I guess you could add a furnace filter to this probably pretty easily just by building a box on the top, but um, 
Yeah, you just have to be careful that you didn't slow down the air movement so much with that filter that it was no Correct. longer mm. yeah, doing its job. Yeah. Um, real beginner question. What's the compressor for? Oh, so the compressor hooks up to the spray gun, and it blows the glaze through the gun. Yeah, so it uh, it's like spray paint, but uh -huh. with glaze and not in a can, yeah. You can actually get manual ones very inexpensively. Oh, yeah, the animals are right. Yeah. Yeah. They're fun. They're fun to use. Yeah, yeah. yeah two oh, bucks. Goodness. You get a little dizzy if you have yes. to do a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's fun, too. <laughs> Where did you find one for two bucks? At that Chinese play art. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Did you say how you cut the hole? I, I oh, I didn't. Um, so I just used uh, like a drill bit in the corners and then a jigsaw, uh, like an electric jigsaw. Oh. It's very easy to cut these though. You could use a like a keyhole saw, a drywall saw, or something. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you. Thank you. No results, I guess. You get these nice, kind of subtle, like um, you know, if you just spray from one direction, you kind of get get it just on the high spots. Or like this is a good example. So this was sprayed kind of from this side only, so you can get this kind of like faux atmospheric, uh, like flashing on the back side. Have you used a little wheel inside there? You know, a, a lazy Susan. Yeah. It just spit. Yep, um, I would have brought recipes that are also very conducive to spraying. These sprays, I think, almost all just work. Do you have to thin the glaze? Uh, I have not had to thin mine. Some people do thin it. Um, if you're using the gravity-fed spray gun, mm -hmm. you're more likely to need to thin it. Um, the siphon one that uses the mason jars, the passage is pretty large, so most of it can get through there. Regarding that, like I noticed that I've sprayed with like my own glazes, you know, studio glazes that are kind of thin, but I notice that, like commercial glazes can be kind of thicker sometimes. Huh. Okay. Have you tried commercial glazes? I've not ever tried spraying any commercial glazes, no. They use a lot of gums, I think, to, to keep them in suspen uh, suspended. So I wonder I if that's probably what it is. I wonder if they would need to be thinned out. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, you said you use that wood ash glazes? Yep. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I use some wood ash sometimes, and I find that the wood ash settles very quickly to the bottom of whatever you're, whether you're brushing it on or whatever you're doing with it, the ash settles very quickly to the bottom. You need to stir it all the time. Do you have that problem? Um, not that it settles any quicker than other, other glazes. Um, really? Oh, no. Oh, uh, I mean, if it does, you just can shake the gun yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, that's just a little thing. Yeah. So that was from Bailey, that spray gun? Um, this one I think I got at the ceramic shop, but oh. Bailey sells basically the same gun. Creative. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. What kind of um, hose comes into that? Is it like a fish tank hose or does it come off your, your uh, compressor? Uh, it comes off the compressor. Oh, oh, so, oh. Yeah, so the one end hooks to the compressor and then the other end just oh, I see. hooks on the handle here. Okay. And that's part that comes with the compressor? That line? Um, yeah, depending, depending on, on which compressor you buy, but yeah. Yeah, this is a pretty standard. So only air thing. goes through there. You never have to clean that. Right. Yep. Yeah. So it's only the the yeah, tube here. There. Yep. Okay. Yep. Or in this case, you know, the glaze goes up here, and then you're cleaning this, and there's like a small needle and a bunch of little passages in here that you need to clean out. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, sure. Matt, yeah. what is your last name? Uh, Kriegler. Kriegler, thank yep. you. If I take the picture of you with your name tag, then I'll yeah, have sure it all thing. together. Yeah. Because my brain